Good morning. Everyone here okay? Enough? Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ on this Lord's Day. Welcome to this uh, first outdoor worship service of August and of 2021. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ to one and all. My friends, then if you will, prepare your hearts and your minds to worship the living God on this Lord's Day. Our call to worship from Psalm 32, verse 11. The psalmist writes, Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy, you upright in heart. Brothers and sisters, let us worship God. Christ for the world we see. on the inside of the bulletin. Are there any updates, uh, additions, or uh, removals, or updates about those who are on the prayer list? I think being a summer day and being August, I think we can pray traveling mercies and all those who are a part of the church who are uh, coming and going on vacation, uh, friends and family likewise who are, who are out and about this summer. With that said then, brothers and sisters, if you will, let us pray. Gracious Father, we often fail to take refuge in your forgiveness. We find ourselves gathered together here today, though, offering ourselves, the whole of ourselves, our whole lives, <coughs> to your love and to your grace. Enable us to show to others tomorrow and the next day and the next the forgiveness and the mercy and the grace and the peace and the love that we know and that we celebrate today and this morning. As we gather together today and as we find ourselves out here on this lovely summer day, we lift up to you our joys and our sorrows, our anxieties and our dreams. We pray today for our friends and for our enemies. We pray for any who are known to us who are sick or who are suffering in any way. We pray for those who are anxious or afraid. We pray for anyone anywhere who is in need of your grace and your presence. And so we make known to you, we lift up to you in the silence of our hearts, that person or that situation that's nearest our thoughts today. Uh, everlasting and almighty God, we ask that you would empower each one here today for the living of life with confidence, empowered by your Holy Spirit to meet every challenge. And we pray that all that we do and say and think would tend toward your glory as we advance your kingdom and as we share your good news of salvation by your grace and as winsome and effective and authentic a way as is possible. We make all these prayers after the manner of Jesus who taught his disciples to pray, even us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Praise my soul, thy King of heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring, and some tear is forgiven, ever for his praises sing. Alleluia, alleluia, praise the everlasting King. Lord's Day. Uh, this from Jeremiah uh, in chapter 6, verse 16, the first part of verse 16. Friends, listen for what the Spirit might say to you. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. And may God bless the reading and hearing of this portion of God's holy word.
scripture passage today is from Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a prophet whose ministry was in and to Judah, the southern kingdom, uh, just before Jerusalem and the whole country fell to Babylonian invasion and to exile. And his work lasted for just at 40 years. Uh, and a recurring theme in that 40-year ministry was calling the people to a right and an authentic relationship with God. Now, the people over the years had come to embrace uh, idols and false worship, which often entailed the mistreatment of other people. And so Jeremiah called them to, to get right with God, as a prophet might be expected to do. And in today's passage, you have that little turn of phrase that I, I kind of find evocative. Jeremiah calls the people to return to the old paths and to the good way. As, as a child, my uh, horseshoe-shaped neighborhood uh, was surrounded on two sides by chunks of land, uh, woods on one side and woods and a, a cow pasture on the other. And so I was able to take many hours out in the woods playing and frolicking uh, hither and yon. The, woods were full of little trails that had been established by children of years before uh, and so I was able to uh, make my way around the woods knew where I was didn't have to give much thought to my footing I could wander around as a child uh, pretty confident of where I was and where I was going uh, Jeremiah here is calling God's people to return to the old paths and to the good way it's a call to put real faith in God and to trust in Him for their journey into their exile in a foreign land. And a little later in chapter 7 and verse 23, Jeremiah calls back to the earliest history of God's people, and he says, But this command I gave them, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. And walk in all the way that I command you, that it may be well with you. Uh, in, in the New Testament, the word for walk is peripateo. It was it's a, a, an interesting little word, but it, it means walk and it means locomotion, going from point A to point B with your feet and your legs. But it can also mean just sort of the, the whole of your life, particularly in the New Testament, the, or, the arena or the sphere of spiritual life. Uh, but it can mean the whole of your life, to walk in newness of life, to walk in the ways of the Lord is kind of how it's used. So to, to walk someplace is a metaphor for the whole of life. To walk with God is about our life with God, our spiritual journey with God through this life. And Jesus keyed off of Jeremiah in chapter 6 here this morning, the verse we read, when he said in Matthew's Gospel, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. So I would submit to you that the old paths and the good way of Jeremiah led down the corridor of time to Jesus. With, with Jesus, we leave off the attempts to justify ourselves before God to merit our salvation. We let go of the burdens created by sin and guilt. We offer over to God our disappointments and our unrealized dreams. We trust in God's love to make us whole in this life and in that life beyond the grave, we are able to rest in Jesus. As you travel the, the highway, we're having been down there, I guess, just last month, as you travel the highway from South Carolina to North Carolina, you pass through a little town called Traveler's Rest. Uh, it's a town, I think we learned this in third grade, having grown up in, in the same county, Traveler's Rest was indeed just that. It was a place where travelers uh, getting ready to mount uh, up the Blue Ridge would stop and rest for a while, or coming off of the Blue Ridge down into South Carolina's foothills would stop and rest their horses and get a bite to eat and continue on their journey. It was a place, a wayside rest on the journey. The old paths of Jeremiah might be interpreted for us in 2021 as a reminder to turn to Jesus Christ, who is the traveler's rest, who is that place where people weary can lay down their burdens. Jesus Christ is God's saving love come to us, 
and the old paths of Jeremiah, the good way of Jeremiah, is that journey to him. The simple gospel of Jesus calls us to find in him our resting place, to lay down our burden of sin and guilt, and to find in Jesus rest for our souls. And so we do come today to the table to find rest for our souls, to taste and see that the Lord is good, to remind ourselves that we have been accepted by God's grace, that we did not need to earn God's love, but that God has come to us in Jesus Christ to embrace us as God's own beloved sons and daughters. And so that is what we will celebrate today as we come to this, a kind of traveler's rest. The old path leads us here. The good way finds us at the table of the Lord Jesus Christ, the table of grace. Amen. sacrament of the Lord's table. Uh, as we do so, we remind ourselves that this is not the table of the First Presbyterian Church of Glendale. It is not a Protestant. It is not a Catholic. It is not a liberal or conservative table. It is the table of the Lord Jesus Christ. All barriers and boundaries and labels, all the disputes and disagreements that we have are laid down around it, and we all come, brothers and sisters, to it, to receive, to celebrate, to find God's grace in Jesus Christ. The table of Jesus Christ is a place of welcome, it is a place of hospitality, and so the message, the invitation goes out from north and south to east and west to come and sit, to eat, to feast in God's kingdom at God's table. Remember, as we come to these elements, to this table, to bread and cup, that Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. After he blessed it, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. The same way he took the cup, and after he gave it to his disciples, he said, Drink you all of it in remembrance of me. When we eat the bread, when we drink the cup, we remember the cross of Jesus Christ till he comes again. And so, brothers and sisters, let us pray. A gracious Father, you have called us to faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, through the power and the work of your Holy Spirit. Grant that in this sacred supper in bread and in cup we would share in a holy communion with you and with all who trust in your grace. Enable us to live more faithfully after the example of Jesus until the day that we are finally gathered together with you. And so as we come and we receive these elements of, of bread and juice, we ask that you lift our eyes from these visible signs to Christ seated and reigning in heaven. And we ask through your Holy Spirit that we would indeed and in fact be the presence of Jesus for those around us, that we would be the body of Christ in this world, that we would be 
the hands and the feet and the heart and the voice of Jesus to those around us as we share the gospel of grace in word and in deed. And so as we come to this communion today, we make all these prayers in the name of Christ, the good master. Amen. Friends, the bread that we break, is this not the bread of heaven come down for us, the very body of Christ? And also, brothers and sisters, the cup we pour. Is this not the cup of the new covenant sealed in the very life's blood of Jesus Christ, the cup of grace? And so as we come to these signs, these elements, to bread and to cup, I say to you, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you will, let us pray. Living God, thank you for this supper shared in your spirit, which brings us new life and is a sign and a seal of your saving grace in Christ our Lord. Allow us, through your Holy Spirit, to truly be his brothers and his sisters as we live out what it means to be the body of Christ, as we launch out into this new week, allow us to share his love with those we meet along <clears throat> life's way and to offer his salvation, to offer his rest to those we meet. In your name we pray. Amen. So friends, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah and amen. <clears throat>